Greetings, Don's friends and dermatology patients. We miss seeing you here in our clinic, but we hope, we hope of course, that you are home safe and sound with your families. Um, this time of year, we're usually having a lot of conversations with you guys in our clinic about sun safety and answering questions about sunscreen and that sort of thing. And since we can't have you come in, we thought we would at least post a video with some of the information that we usually share with our patients um, and hope you find it helpful. First, let's talk about why it's important to be sun safe in the first place. Now, we're not suggesting no sun at all. In fact, it's really important, especially in stressful times of life, to get outside and be active, to get outdoors. That fresh air is healing to the soul, uh, and the sun is good for our spirits. So do get outside and be active. However, uh, also for your skin's sake, take some easy, simple steps to protect it so that you don't cause harm. Cumulative sun exposure, the low level chronic exposure that we experience in our normal day to day activities, working or playing outside, seems to over time be most strongly connected with our risk of squamous cell, skin cancer, and photo aging. While the incidence of sunburns or history of sunburns over our lifetime seems most strongly connected with our risk of basal cell, skin cancer, and melanoma, although there's obviously a lot of overlap there too. Rule number one is don't get caught off guard. This is the time of year when everybody gets their first sunburn, hopefully their last. Um, because we've been indoors all winter and people are just stepping out for the first time, going for walks, working in the garden after having been indoors for many months and their skin is not accustomed to the sun. That said, tanning beds are not uh, ever recommended by dermatologists to prime your skin or get it used to sun exposure. Tanning beds are strongly linked with photoaging and skin cancers, so we recommend avoiding them entirely. Don't forget too that you can get sunburn almost as easily on a cloudy day as you can on a sunny day. So don't get caught off guard. Start protecting yourself before you get sunburned in the spring. The second rule is seek shade. And if you can't find it, make your own. But remember that being in the shade in and of itself isn't sufficient. Believe it or not, you can actually get sunburned in the shade. And let's be honest, you have to walk through the sun to get to the shade. So just planning to be in the shade does not exclude the need to also make sure that you cover up and wear sunscreen. Some of the best ways to make your own shade are through sun protective clothing and hats. We carry a number of great items here in our store that are great examples that I'll show you. Some of our favorite items come from uh, an online store called Coolie Bar. We also have hats here by Sunday afternoons. Um, and we carry them here in our store for your convenience since you can try them on. You can also shop online at their stores, coolybar.com, sundayafternoons.com, um, if you can't come in. But a great wide-brimmed hat like this is the type that we favor. It provides great shade, uh, obviously, for your face, sometimes a little bit the neck and chest. It protects ears, which we often forget about, and scalp. You see a lot of skin cancers on the scalp of people with thinning hair, and there's no better way to protect the skin on the top of your head than wearing a hat. You can also get special sun protective clothing with a high sun protection to factor. Coolie Bar has a number of them. These fabrics are specially treated to protect better from the sun than normal clothing. Remember too that with regards to normal clothing, the darker the fabric and the tighter the weave, the better it's going to protect. These fabrics are meant to be very lightweight and comfortable in hot summer days without compromising the sun protection factor. Another favorite of ours in this clinic are these uh, cooling sports sleeves or UV sleeves, sometimes they're called. They're elastic, fingerless, has a little thumb hole there, protects the back of your hand all the way up to uh, your shoulder. And while it seems like those might be very hot and uncomfortable in the summer, in fact, if you wet them, they also act as cooling sleeves. I keep some in the console of my car and in the summer when I'm driving, which is where I get most of the sun on the backs of my arms, I put my sleeves on to help protect me. So now let's talk a little bit about sunscreen. There are two main factors to consider, I think, when choosing a sunscreen. The first is, will it be effective? And the second is, Will you actually wear it? Because a very effective sunscreen that stays in the bottle doesn't actually do you any good. So let's talk first about um, what makes a sunscreen effective. Um, 
obviously what makes it something that you don't mind putting on is a pretty personal choice, but I'll show you some examples that'll have some different features you might want to consider. So when choosing sunscreen, first thing we recommend you look at is the active ingredients. We recommend sunscreens that contain zinc or titanium, the so-called physical blockers, as at least one of the active ingredients. Some screens, sometimes referred to as chemical-free sunscreens or physical sunscreens, may contain purely zinc and titanium, while others will contain a mix and others contain only the chemical sunscreens. The best combination in, in terms of effectiveness is probably zinc plus a chemical sunscreen, uh, but some people prefer to avoid chemical sunscreens altogether. Some of you may be aware that in the last year or so, a study came out showing that we actually absorb a lot more of the chemical sunscreen ingredients into our bodies through our skin than was previously known. This doesn't mean that they are dangerous. There is no evidence to suggest that thus far. It just means it needs to be more thoroughly studied. That said, some people are choosing to use purely physical sunblocks in the meantime, which is totally fine. That said, one chemical sunscreen that I personally recommend avoiding and avoid in my own family is one called oxybenzone. There is uh, a little bit more evidence that this one might be an endocrine disruptor and it, it seems to be absorbed through the skin into the body at a much higher rate than some of the other chemical sunscreens. So oxybenzone I try to avoid. There are plenty of good sunscreens out there that don't contain it. So now let's talk a little bit about SPF. SPF stands for sun protection factor and it's a measure of how effectively a sunscreen blocks UVB, the type of uh, UV light that causes sunburn. It doesn't tell you anything about how well it blocks UVA, which is why it's important to choose a sunscreen that is broad spectrum. That way you know it's blocking more than just UVB. Some people ask, I've heard that it doesn't matter if your sunscreen SPF is higher than a 30, so should I just stick with a 30 or is it important to go higher? There's actually some good evidence that when it comes to sunscreen, the higher the number, the better. In the laboratory, an SPF 30 sunscreen blocks about 97% of the UVB light. And if it did that in real life, that would probably be sufficient. However, real people, we just don't apply as thick a layer as they do in the laboratory. So in reality, if we're applying an SPF 30 sunscreen like the average person, we may be getting an effective SPF of only seven or eight. So aim higher with your SPF. I usually aim for 50 or higher if I'm going to the pool and my daily sunscreen for my face, I usually do 40 or higher. So now let's talk about some specific sunscreens and I'll give you some recommendations and talk to you a little bit about their properties. One of our favorite sunscreen lines is Elta MD Skin Care. They make a lot of really great sunscreens with varying consistencies intended for face or body. The first uh, I'm gonna show you here is UV Pure. This is a non-chemical, that is physical sunscreen with zinc and titanium only, with an SPF of 47, it is water resistant to 80 minutes, and is in, uh, intended for use on the face or body. And you can see it has a nice consistency and rubs in easily. Another chemical-free, purely physical blocker that could be used on uh, body and potentially on the face is made by Kula. This is a 70% organic sunscreen uh, with 15% zinc oxide, very lightweight, soaks in very easily. Uh, another very nice physical blocker. My favorite for my family is the Elta Aero SPF 45. Unlike many spray sunscreens, this one actually goes on white, so you can see where you have put it, as opposed to some of the clear ones where it's really easy to miss spots, and yet it stays on very well. Again, 80 minute water resistant. And last for body, I'll show you UV Sport. This is an SPF 50 with zinc and chemical blockers. Um, has a little bit heavier feel than uh, the Pure, a little bit more hydrating perhaps, but again, has the combination of the physical and the chemical blocker and rubs in very nicely. We have Elta Daily and Elta Clear for our options for facial sunscreens with a mix of physical and chemical sunscreen ingredients. Elta Daily is gonna be just a little bit more hydrating and comes with both in both a tinted or non-tinted version. 
while Elta Clear, the UV Clear version, is meant for more normal to oily, acne-prone skin. It's great for uh, breakout-prone skin and contains niacinamide, which is great for calming inflammation. Last, I just want to remind you, don't forget about your lips. We see a lot of skin cancers on the lips as well, so wearing a lip balm with a sunscreen is a great idea. It is a little bit harder to find lip balms with zinc in them because zinc tends to look a little bit white. For women, we have the option then of just choosing a tinted uh, lip balm that has zinc in it. This one by Color Science goes on kind of like a gloss and it has a little applicator stick. It comes in several different colors and has the zinc in there with an SPF of 35. Very nice option. Uh, whereas this one uh, looks more like a chapstick, um, goes on as a stick uh, and has the SPF of 30 with a tint in there. So these two both have the zinc in them. This, obviously neither of these, obviously neither of these are suitable really for men. This is our non-pigmented, uh, non-tinted sunscreen from Lip Lux. It's really smooth, feels really good going on, uh, and has an SPF of 30, no zinc in it, but again, a very nice option um, for lips that can work for men or for women. So that's it. That's all I have to share today about sun protection. Hopefully it was helpful and not too overwhelming. Again, the benefit of a video is you can always rewind and listen again if you missed something. Please call us uh, at any time or come in when you can if you have any other questions or things that we can help with. Uh, and stay sun safe.